Hey YouTube, Dustin Ryder here, and welcome to my review for the brand new wave of Ben 10 figures from Season 3. This is a pretty exciting wave. I think the enhanced ones are pretty neat, but I think this is the most excited I've been about a wave in a long time, because it's got lots of neat new stuff and new spins on old stuff. So we got Buggy Ben here, who's in this kind of outfit with a scooter. Um, this kind of outfit could literally describe any kind of outfit. You got Kevin Levin here, he comes with some extra effect arms. Right now I got kind of the Hotshot one on him, but he also comes with this one. You have Hotshot himself, which is like a negative version of Heat Blast. Um, you have a new alien slapback, that's a totally new alien. His power is kind of a, you know, derivative of Echo Echo or uh, Ditto, but it's kind of different. But he's a whole new alien, I guess is the point. You have returning favorite Humongosaur, who originally debuted during the Alien Force series as part of the Alien Force Original 10. And another fan favorite, Wrath, who was one of the brand new additional aliens in the Alien Force series. So, super exciting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with the humanoid figures, just to go over the kind of ones I'm less excited about. This is still a pretty nice figure though. I kind of dig the outfit. I think the green and black always worked really well. You know, it's obviously been used a ton during Ben 10. I think the outfit's kind of neat. I like the helmet. I like the detail of the 10 there. It's kind of got this neon-y, uh, glow-in-the-dark vibe to it, which is cool. And the scooter's actually not half bad either. Let's focus all the attention on the real star of this review, which is the scooter. Um, no, but it's like kind of neat, because it actually moves around, the wheels spin, um, it's decently detailed, like the silver paint here, sorry, it's unfocusing on there, uh, is actually kind of like nicely painted. So I'm just kind of impressed, because usually it, it can be like a really just snagnet, snagnet, stagnant bit, excuse me. Um, articulation is pretty par for the course for these, pretty solid. You have a hinge joint here, can swivel around here. You got the Omnitrix, also has some pretty nice details on it. Got a pretty nice hinge joint on his foot, knee joint there. The head can move in and around, and thanks, spoiler alert, I was just about to mention that but his visor can move up and down, which I think is super neat. He's got kind of an angry expression. They look kind of weird. That's one thing, is I, I feel like they do a really good job with the alien figures, but I feel like there's something off about the expressions of the humanoid figures. I mean, this one's not so bad, because it's literally just his eyes, and you have the, um, the visor to cover it, so it's not a huge deal, but they are just a little strange. I'm gonna kind of just move him out of the way for now. We'll bring him back in for the final verdict. But speaking of a little strange, we got Kevin Levin here, who again, the face isn't that bad. It, just, it feels like just a little weird to me. There's something a little bit off about it, a little bit dead-eyed, just kind of strange. Um, but design-wise, this Kevin Levin's actually pretty much remarkably similar to the original character design from the first series. Except, obviously, he's got the Antitrix, which is a new concept for the series. I mean, an evil Omnitrix has been explored before with, like, the Nematrix and stuff for beasts, but I think that's a pretty cool spin on it. We've gotten to see a couple different spins on this type of character. Uh, you had, like, the Mutant from the original series. You had Albedo with basically just recolored, slightly redesigned versions later on. And then now you have him with an Antitrix with, like, evil versions. I think that's a cool way to go about it. Um, I kind of dig that. Again, you got these extra arms here, but they just kind of pop on and off, kind of like gloves, which is super nice. If you want to pose it like this, you'll be able to see the underling, underling of his hand. Um, but still, I like that you can do that. It's a lot easier to do than just swapping out arms, and then you don't have to worry about like pulling this off and then losing it somewhere when you want to switch it back. But yeah, detail-wise, he's pretty solid. There's a little paint mistake on mine. You can see there's a little smudge on his nose. Um, articulation is pretty much the same as Ben, um, as far as that goes. You got the uh, Antitrix here. I keep wanting to call it the Nematrix, which is pretty decently detailed. It's kind of got an orangey look to it. Um, you can see the lock there on his shirt, which was signature to his look in uh, the original series, which had an 11 on it, I believe, in the original series. Series. The signature barcode there. They did a pretty good job of mimicking the kind of folds of clothes on there as well. Again, pretty much the same articulation. He's overall a solid figure, and I'm kind of happy to have him because I didn't have... Uh, I, th I think I missed out on getting the original Kevin Levin figure from way back in the original Ben 10 line. But since we're talking about Kevin Levin, we got his very own alien here, Hotshot. It's funny, when I saw this at first glance, I was like, oh man, they're doing like another Heat Blast replacement, but this is essentially meant to be Kevin's like evil version of Heat Blast. He's a little more hulking, he's kind of got the like the earth element here out, I feel more, um, kind of just protruding out. You got like the mohawk. It kind of reminds me of the aesthetic of that crazy like Apocalypse Ben from the Omniverse series. Um, obviously there's flames here. These are also removable. These are just little flame effects and you can take these off um, to show his hands off. But I really dig the design of it. I think that's a cool idea. I, I like I liked the design when I saw it. I was like, oh, it's a cool design, but I wish they weren't doing another heat alien. But then after I figured out what it was, I'm like, oh, that's actually really cool. I dig this quite a bit. 
it. It's a pretty nice figure. Um, you got pretty nice articulation. This is going to be hindered a little bit here, uh, but you still have some pretty solid range of motion there, which is really nice. Uh, no loose joints or anything. This moves a bit. Obviously, it's not going to be as, you know, articulated as the humans because they can't move their heads up and down. But still, it's a little something. I really like the design. I think it's super cool. Hopefully, we get to see more of his. Now, we got Slapback here who comes with two of his little dense alien replicas, which I think is super neat. They're just, you know, standard green and black there. They don't move or articulate or anything, but it's nice they included it. Slapback's kind of an interesting design. I do kind of like it, but he also kind of looks like an old man. Um, I do really like the Omnitrix being on the back, just like Grey Matter had, because I really liked in the original series when they had the Omnitrix go all over the place. And they did that in Omniverse too. And he feels like an, an alien that would have been designed for that original series era. So I do kind of dig him. Like I said, I wish his powers were kind of different. He kind of involves like, you know, when he gets hit, he will like hit these guys out and uh, being these little dense copies. So it's not quite like Echo Echo's, but, or Ditto's, but kind of similar. It could have been cool if he was based on kinetic energy, since he's called Slapback, like if he gets hit, he kind of stores that. I don't know, that'd be kind of cool. But also some pretty good articulation here. Got the swiveling and the elbow joint, which is really nice for kind of uh, alien designs like this that are a little bit bigger and aren't like as like nimble as him, so you do have some bits of articulation. The legs basically only move back and forth, but hey, you can have him like sitting down on something kind of adorably. And you know, his, his head moves here. So there's that. All right, now we have some returning old friends. You have Humongosaur, um, one of the original 10 Alien Force aliens, as I mentioned. One of Ben's go-to aliens, so much so that there was a huge bit about it in early Omniverse, about how he kept trying to transform into it. He's largely, no pun intended, the same as his original design. Uh, the, the head sculpt, or the head design rather, is probably the most significant difference. It looks a little bit different animation than here. Um, speaking of like the old man look, this kind of makes him look like an old man, like they're gonna do old man humongousaur like Logan. Um, but I like that they kept him relatively the same. The only thing he comes with is his tail, which you attach here. And he's got a bit of more of a spiked tail, which is more reminiscent of Ultimate Humongousaur. But I really like this, and I really like Wrath, because I always preferred the Omnitrix being the the white and gray or the white and black design when he transformed. I thought it made it different. And I always had wondered like what would it kind of look like if Ben had found these aliens when he was younger as opposed to after the Omnitrix recalibrated when he was 15. So I think that's super cool. I really dig that. I'm happy to have it. He's a little bit of a weird figure with a weird face, um, but he's an overall nice looking figure. He's got nice articulation. Um, Stuff like that. I kind of wish that if they were going to get rid of aliens in the lineup, you also have the waist articulation here. That's unrelated, just to segue in. Um, that they kind of gotten rid of forearms. I don't think they would, though, just because he's such a popular alien, but it's just like you have two strength aliens on your team, um, and Ben will probably use them both a lot, just like in the original series. All right, now you have Wrath here, fan favorite, one of my all-time favorite aliens. Again, his design is largely unchanged. Few tweaks here and there. Obviously, Omnitrix is a different color than the traditional... Um, black and green. Um, they actually didn't change his design a whole lot over the years outside of when they gave him that outfit in later Omniverse episodes, but he's largely unchanged, like I said, which is nice because I, I do prefer just this design of Wrath. It's a nice figure. I do like the figure. I think it's well represented, of it, re well represented for him, which is nice. Again, solid articulation. You got the tiger claws here and stuff like that. Um, the waist articulation you can see. I wish his head moved up and down a little bit. That would be kind of nice. But something that's weird about him is that he has this fur texture to him, which makes a lot of sense because he's a tiger. So like in the cartoon world, yeah, he would have fur. But when we're seeing him outside of little areas where they might put jag jagged lines in, you know, he doesn't look like that. He looks smooth and that's how the previous figures were done. And like as a result, I feel this kind of looks like what a Wrath figure would look like for a live-action Ben 10 movie. Like, for those of you that might remember uh, Race Against Time, that live-action movie, and we got a few live-action alien designs for, like, Heat Blast and Diamond Head and stuff. Like, if Wrath had appeared in one of those, uh, they did Alien Swarm, too. Like, this is what that looks like, which is kind of strange to me. But again, one of my favorites. Always wondered what it would be like if they, he discovered these. It's not a huge change, but it's just kind of a neat thing. And, like, I'm glad to see that they're diving into new takes on some of the older aliens. I kind of hope that we get some... Um, some more that are a little bit more tweaked, like somewhere in the middle, some that are maybe a little more drastically changed, like Stinkfly was. But yeah, overall, this is a really nice wave of figures. I definitely have my nitpicks here and there, but these are still mostly very well done figures. They're very nicely painted. 
They have good articulation. I don't really have any QC problems in terms of, outside of Kevin's nose, like any huge paint problems, no loose joints. I think this is a really cool and exciting way for fans that, you know, recognize these older aliens and it's also got some new creative ideas going on here. So I definitely recommend checking these out for those of you that are fans. They're just really nice figures and I'm really impressed impressed with the way Playmates makes the Ben 10 figures. But anyway, that's about it. Until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and of course, don't forget to climb the steps and ring that bell so you can get the notifications for all my Ben 10 videos and more. Till next time, Dawson Ryder, signing out.